Hi there, this is Christian Dye, Joel Robertson, and Eric Halstrom. Uh, we are presenting government funding update on April 10, 2020. This is for our Latitude West financial clients, uh, wellness association members, and guests. So let's get right into it over here. What we want to do in this talk is we want to present what is happening with government subsidies right now and what can you be doing to improve your financial situation. So right now we're scheduled to have this talk approximately, let's see if we can make it through in about 30 to 40 minutes and then we're going to stop the recording and then we're going to have some Q&A over here for those on the live session. All right, so the very, very first thing I want to do is say uh, thank you and gratitude to all the frontline workers uh, who are working on the coronavirus uh, and I'm encouraging everyone to follow the government directives to stay safe and stay at home okay so uh, government benefits uh, so obviously there is a crisis that the government is working on so the topics we'll be covering today are the um, the benefits that individuals employers uh, can take advantage of subsidies for renters and landlords uh, what they need to do for in form of tax deadlines miscellaneous benefits and any sort of loans available Joel, I'm going to turn it over to you to start us off with talking about the employee benefits. Yeah, so this is the straightforward one. Uh, the CERB was introduced last week, and people could apply for it this week, uh, starting on Monday. And what it is, is it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you've been laid off and are eligible for EI, um, and you expect to be out of work for at least 14 days, you can apply for this, and the benefit's $2,000 per month. Um, so the the qualifications, you have to be at least 15, you have to have stopped working due to COVID or are eligible for EI. And if you had already applied for EI, the government wanted to make sure that as many people as this or got this as uh, possible. So if you already applied for EI, they'll just switch you over to this. And you had to have had income of 5,000 in 2019. And they had a lot of back and forth with the 5,000 figure. And uh, they've accepted that uh, if you have maybe disability income or EI income in 2019 of more than 5,000, that'll count. So they, the way for you to apply for this, they made it very straightforward. And the reason that they made this uh, program so simple is because they got a huge amount of applications this week. So they needed to make the administration as fast as possible. And we were really impressed with what they were able to come up with. Um, so the way you apply is you go to your My CRA account. And if you don't have one, um, it does take a while to set up. So if you don't have one, you'll have to call their automated phone service, uh, which I've heard is also uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, once you have applied, I know lots of people falling into this category uh, have already applied. There is a monthly check-in to say that you're working less than 10 hours a week. And if you have gone back to work more than 10 hours a week, they, they will stop paying you. Uh, but if you're doing something really part-time, uh, maybe you know less than 10 hours a week, uh, they're fine with that. So uh, anybody that was part-time to begin with and step back to really limited hours, uh, they would still be covered by this plan. If they're if they're working part-time right now, Joel, uh, do they qualify for this at all? Uh, you would have had to drop down below the 10 hours a week. Uh, so if you're still working more than that, uh, then you would not qualify. Perfect. All right. Um, was there anything else you want to add before we move on? Uh, no. So this is the most simple thing for individuals. Um, if you haven't applied, they're still accepting applications and we have no idea how long they're going to pay for. Um, they've said uh, up to four months, but this is evolving uh, on a weekly basis. So uh, stay tuned on how long this uh, plan will be in force. Perfect. Just okay. a quick question here, if you guys don't mind. Yes, um, yes. <clears throat> the, uh, the CRA phone line uh, for creating your uh, your CRA account has not been on or taking active calls during certain like peak periods the last couple of days. So if if people are calling in and it's saying the line's not in operation, just keep keep calling. It's really the only option there. Perfect. Thanks. Perfect. And then once it's, once it's processed, they're paying out pretty much right away. Um, so, you know, it's a real good resource for anybody, as you said. It's the simplest one, and it's something that, that gets done right away for the most part. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Employer benefits, Joel. Yeah. So uh, we're talking about employers because um, some of the people on the call uh, will 
will be business owners, but also from an employee standpoint, if you have an employer that's maybe not up to speed, uh, all, everything that's going on, a lot of employees will be in a better situation if their employer enrolls in this program. Uh, so what the program looks like is the government's agreed to pay 75% of pre-crisis uh, earnings for employees uh, up to $847 a week per employee. So this is way really more um, than what they originally said they were going to do. And um, it works out to be uh, quite a bit more than the previous one if you make more than 35000 If you make less than 35000 then the previous benefit is going to be better, but it's up to the employer to decide which one uh, to go for. And if you make over uh, 58000 then you're capped out at 847 a week is, is the benefit. Um, so the qualifications, they just dropped their um, uh, the documentation that they need for this to make it a little bit easier to qualify for for businesses. So they only require a 15% drop in revenue uh, or more in March, April, May. So from a business owner perspective, it's pretty easy. Um, basically all businesses have seen this drop. So qualifying for it is not a huge issue. Um, but uh, the government does want employers to pay the uh, remaining 25% of employee salary up to uh, the yearly pensionable earnings, which is 58,000. Uh, employers don't have to do this though. That's a misconception about this plan. You just have to sign saying that you will do the best you can to pay that amount. Uh, but the government will pay the 75% and, uh, and that could be all you pay your employees. Uh, so uh, you have this, but there's one issue and that is, um, and that's timing. So they're going to pay between March 15th and June 6th, this amount of your payroll, but you probably won't get reimbursed until the end of May, early June. Uh, so from a business owner standpoint, uh, you're going to be out cash flow for this period of time. And if you don't have the reserves, you'll have to look at different loan options, which the government has also proposed, especially for larger businesses that are in this situation when maybe they don't have, you know, two or three months worth of uh, payroll kind of put aside. Sure. Uh, can I move on, Joel? Uh, yes. We'll, we'll take questions again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, business loans available. Uh, so there's a couple of business loans and uh, these have been evolving quite a bit as well. Uh, the first one is a straightforward one. So 40,000 uh, Canada Emergency Business Account Loan. So this is something that the government's saying that they will um, fund businesses through banks. So the way you apply is you go to your corporate banker and you say you wanna apply for this business loan and it'll be facilitated through the government, but the bank will actually give you the loan for the 40,000. And what we're reading is that uh, part of that will likely be forgiven. So from a business owner standpoint, it uh, really makes sense to take advantage of this loan. So it's, it's interest-free until 2022. And then if you pay that in full, likely a quarter of it will be forgiven. Uh, so this is a good situation for anybody uh, that qualifies. So the qualification is you have to have at least 50,000 in T4 salary that you paid out in 2019. So don't, don't confuse T4A. Uh, lots of people have contract workers. Uh, contract salary does not count. So you have to have 50,000 in regular salary in 2019 to qualify for this benefit. Uh, the, next, the next loan is uh, uh, from the Business Development Bank of Canada. Um, so they, they do a lot of work with small businesses and they actually increased their uh, their maximum loan amount to six and a quarter million. So they're really trying to push a lot of money out um, to make sure small businesses, uh, for the most part, uh, don't go bankrupt and can't stomach this. Um, it, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a good uh, bank offer where they are being very flexible on loan terms, repayment schedules uh, and everything like that to support the local businesses. Joel, shall we move on? Yeah. All right, subsidy for renters and landlords. Uh, so this is specific to BC, but we've seen it across Canada um, where we're focusing on the BC one because uh, our practice is uh, located in Vancouver. Uh, 
it's not a, a ton of money uh, for renters and landlords, especially from a Vancouver perspective when rent is so high, but it is something. Um, so what the uh, 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 BC housing and the government has come up with is they'll say, okay, if, you, if your household income has dropped more than 25% due to COVID-19 or you're on EI or receiving another one of the benefits, uh, and you have a family income less than these parameters, then you qualify for some housing relief benefit. Um, so it's $300 a month for individuals and $500 a month for families with dependents. Uh, so, uh, of course, from a rent perspective, it's, it's not covering a lot, but it is, it is helpful. And uh, they will pay um, for, for an extended period of time. Uh, so they haven't exactly come up with a hard number on what that looks like. Uh, but it's something that a lot of people fall into and definitely worth applying for. Um, so you have to have a, a family income less than 74000 for individuals or couples or families less than 113000 And if you fall into that category, um, then you can apply. And the application is pretty straightforward. You go to bchousing.org. Uh, and then you go to the uh, part of the application, it's COVID-19 BC uh, TRS. Uh, and the uh, one possible hiccup is the landlord does need to approve uh, the validity of your application. So if you are applying, make sure that you send a message to your landlord because they will get an email and they'll just have to approve everything that you wrote down on your application. Hmm. Okay, uh, shall I move on? Yeah. Um, sorry, I have one question about that. Yeah. about the drop in um, household income 25 percent how are yeah. um how are how are we what's the burden of proof for the renter uh in terms of i mean how do they prove so for somebody that's seen a drop of household income 25 percent in the last month or you know whatever how is it just with a a t4 and this isn't really for me it's i'm asking for someone else but mm -hmm. how can they how are they supposed to prove that to uh, to the government, like with a pay stub from the last couple weeks, or do you guys know how that? I haven't read the application. Uh, but that's a good point. We all have family and friends in this situation. So mm -hmm. um, I recommend if you do fall into this category and you're currently spending more than 30% of your household income on rent, uh, okay. go through their application on BC Housing. Okay. okay. Um, the application they say is straightforward. And um, BC Housing in general is like they're, they're decent to call. I don't know, okay. they're, they're probably uh, overwhelmed like every uh, Yeah. Uh, they're, they're trying to make these programs as easy to apply for as possible. So they probably mm -hmm. reduced a lot of those parameters and making it only 25% drop in income uh, mm -hmm. makes it even uh, yeah. a, a standpoint. Awesome, thank you. Well, I, I think with these programs as well, there'll be a lot of, <clears throat> you know, check the boxes stuff up front. And then if, uh, you know, post COVID, they find that they want to audit some people, they'll probably be taking a closer look at things. Um, the, these applications would, would take forever if, if they were going to literally get everybody to bring in, you know, a balance sheet or, you know, a statement of personal income. Exactly. Like that. So mm -hmm. uh, probably what they'll see, and that's, that's a hunch. So take it with a grain of salt, but that would be more what I think is going to happen. And it was like mm -hmm. that for, uh, for the business loan, you know, check the boxes and then be prepared to show documents later down the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good question. Thanks. Tax deadlines, uh, Joel. Yeah, so we just want to talk about um, some quick uh, uh, things to note. So for businesses, um, the government is letting you defer corporate income taxes uh, up to August 31st if they came due after March 17th. Uh, as well as GST, HST payments. Uh, so, so lots of our uh, self-employed practitioners will have GST, HST payments. Um, these are due likely before uh, regular income taxes for individuals. So uh, the income taxes, uh, you have to have your tax filings in by June 1st, uh, but the payment's probably not until August 31st, and they might push that even further. Uh, so just to note, there is different uh, deferral deadlines for uh, GST and uh, income tax filings. Okay. Uh, some miscellaneous benefits. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot on here. Um, I only have a few of the, uh, the main ones that have came across my desk so far. 
Uh, one is that for um, certain commercial real estate, they've cut school tax in half, uh, which apparently has caused the benefit of 500 million. So this will make uh, rent of commercial properties a little bit cheaper for uh, people in that situation. Uh, everybody that's receiving child care benefit, you don't have to apply for this, but they're giving an extra $300 per child in May, just as a one-time payment, uh, because so many people had to support children when they weren't expecting to, and that's incurred a cost, so they have addressed that. Uh, and then there's lots of uh, deferral programs that different companies are doing. Uh, BC Hydro, ICBC both have uh, deferral programs. ICBC is 90 days, BC Hydro, um, you can essentially negotiate with, especially if you're a business and you have large BC Hydro expenses. Um, they're, they're, being, they're being great about that and very flexible. Uh, deferring mortgages, uh, if you're not affected by uh, COVID in an income standpoint, it might not be the right move to defer your mortgage because they are going to make you repay those months in the end. But uh, banks are being very good for people that can't pay the mortgages, allowing a, a deferral that possibly long term um, in the you know six month range, depending on how long this goes out for. Okay. And um, for uh, the government wants to address um, benefits for students and recent graduates or students that plan on working in the summer. Uh, they're working on that. I don't think they have anything concrete uh, about helping those people, but that's probably to come in the near future. Yeah, no, I, I, I did see something that they are working on that. Uh, so I do think there's going to, and they're rolling out uh, all these programs so quickly. I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if as we get closer to summer, there will be something for all those students who are, who are you know, relying on summer jobs as well. Um, but I, I think that is going to come fairly quickly. Yeah, that'd be great. They, they have done a good job. Administrating this would be uh, very crazy and they've done an awesome job at moving this out so fast. Okay. Uh, so so on, on the government benefits side, Joel, was there anything in, anything that we want to add before we move on? Uh, no, we'll, we'll take the questions at the end. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's let's everyone save questions for the end over here. Uh, but right now, we, we want to sort of start a shift to, to things that you should be doing or could be doing to save money or different strategies over here. Uh, Eric, do you want to tell us about, for your Wellness Association members, the, the, the cell phone savings? Yeah, for sure. So uh, Wellness Mobility is something we've been doing for several years for Association members. Uh, it's a plan that's hosted on the TELUS network. So it's, uh, you know, your mainline network, you're not, uh, you know, getting some sort of substandard service or something like that. Uh, it's 50 bucks a month. Uh, it's on a month to month contract. So, you know, you're not locked into anything. Five gigs of data, unlimited calling throughout Canada and also into the U.S. Uh, when you're in Canada, if you do leave Canada, you're, you're roaming. So that then has the easy roam kick in, which depending on what country you're in has different price rates. And membership for the association is easy as well. It's five bucks a month. So that's not going to tax uh, most people. Um, and also with that, the people who become members of our association save a bunch of money on, uh, on health services, currently mostly done online that are from the health and wellness community. So things like naturopath, fitness, yoga, counseling, traditional Chinese medicine, um, you know, it, it's all in there. Uh, if anybody's interested in participating, um, they can call Tara. The number is listed on the slide here. And then, of course, at the end, we can also get everybody the uh, the phone number and the email if they want to get involved. And something else that you don't see on the slide, but I just want to mention, is that we do have a free and a low cost or free or low cost clinic going on right now. All services are done online, but for anybody that needs support, especially for like mental health services, we've got a ton of practitioners who decide to step up to the plate and start offering services for either free or ten dollars or twenty bucks. Uh, basically, it's the uh, nearly a hundred services that are all under a hundred dollars on uh, on our website, and you can get there by going to uh, wellnessassociation.org or witchdoctor.com. Sure. And once again, go over those sites again at the end of the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Please mention it again. Uh, just a really quick question over here. To be part of the Wellness Association, are, do you have to be a healthcare practitioner? No. Uh, so we have profiles for healthcare practitioners. Um, 
So they can go ahead and sign up online anytime. And then we have another personal member category, which is wide open to anybody who uh, wants to get involved. Perfect, perfect. So at the end, we'll, we'll definitely talk about how we can get involved again. Is that okay, Eric? Yeah, for sure. Perfect. Um, and, and, and I guess uh, uh, I want to transition into what people could be doing during the crisis. So I guess, you know, what are people doing right now? If you're not working right now, you might be doing more Netflix, more online shopping. And that's sort of the things I'm saying, well, why don't we start to minimize that and start to be a little bit more proactive because we don't know how long this thing is going to last. So with Latitude West Financial, what we're encouraging clients to do or new clients to do are to start looking at if, if you could take advantage of investing. Start looking to make sure your insurance is fully covered. Start looking to make sure you are financially organized. So here's some of the logic behind some of these things over here. I want you to think of financial planning in terms of a football game, a, foot, a, a winning team. Well, you've got teams that are strong with offense and teams that are strong with defense. So what does offense and defense look like? Well, if you think, well, you may have heard that the stock market has now crashed. So should I be investing? Is this even a good idea? Well, the first thing I would ask yourself is this. The, the quick answer is maybe. How stable is your cash flow? Is cash flow is very, very dicey. It might not be the best time for you personally, even if others are doing it. What are your other con current investments doing right now? Are they down? Are they in more of a cash or fixed position? If they are, it's a great way to start shifting it into the equity market over here. Um, if you do have stable income and it doesn't look like that, uh, if you do have stable income or you know that your expenses are low enough, uh, you might want to think of leveraging into this market over here. That's a completely separate topic that uh, people can call me about, but there's some huge advantages of deducting the interest as well as essentially hit, hitting the gas pedal uh, in this down market. So when you think of historically investing in crash markets, I put Warren Buffett over here and you know, he, uh, the famous quote is people don't get rich in up markets. Of course, they get they make their wealth in down markets. Uh, and his famous quote, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And what essentially he's saying is that we shouldn't be chasing the markets when they're up. What we should be doing is we should be chasing the markets when they're down. Now, I add on to his statement. Be greedy when others are fearful, but if you are greedy, do it in a very safe manner. So that would be my advice uh, to, to not go crazy, start investing into, into some stocks that have been beaten up, especially if you're not a professional. It can be very, very dangerous. But I'm also saying if you're in the cash flow position to invest in the markets, there is no better time in this last decade in order to do so. So just to give you some numbers over here, the last great crash was in 2008, 2009. It took nine months to go from peak to the trough, and there was a 47% drop. The 47% drop was the greatest drop that we had seen since the Great Depression. It took five years to regain the original peak. But if you were to have started investing during the drop, in one year, it recovered 53%. The two-year average was 31, and the three-year average was 15. In other words, the time to be investing actually is in a down market if you have the financial capability to do so. So this over here shows where we were in 2008 and in one year where the drop was. This was March 2008 all the way to the bottom of March 2009. But you'll notice what happened in, in all of the years coming back. It did take us a while to get back there, but it did recover incredibly nicely. Now, if you take a look of where we were essentially one month ago, we were at this peak. Then we went all the way to this massive drop and then we did a tiny little bounce. What we're doing is we're noticing that it is a similar trend to what had happened before. Now we cannot predict the future, but if you have faith that the markets will recover, then you want to start thinking of an investment strategy now if you're in a financial position to do so. And then you also want to think of comparing traditional versus leveraged investments. We're talking with clients who actually would like to leverage money in because they have access to, let's say, a line of credit or they have stable income, which would easily qualify for them. So this definitely isn't for everyone. 
but I, I just want to show you what the numbers of why a leverage works. If, if you have confidence that a leverage will, uh, that the markets will return, but we don't know how much they'll return. So let's say we take a five-year average and, the, and we feel that the markets will return over five years to a rate of return of either six, eight, 10, or 15%. Well, if you were to invest with dollar cost averaging and put your money in, you'd get six, eight, or 10, or 15. If you were to leverage money in, and I just use a 3.2% interest rate over here over five-year time period, the leverage gives you this exponential growth. So here, if the market's just returned a 6% on average over the next five years, a leveraged investment would return 20. If it went to 10%, it would be 45. So I don't want to talk too much more about that because it's definitely not everyone is in the, the scenario to do so. But for those of you who are thinking of doing this, you want to do it in a very, very safe way. And if you want to start up a conversation, we could help to describe how you could do it in a safe way. So what are the pros? You got a high rate of return and you could deduct the interest if you did it non-registered. What are the cons? It's a volatile market interest rates will fluctuate and you have to understand that you need to be in a cash flow position in order to service the interest and you got to have faith in the stock market that it is going to rebound so I do have a, a talk called investing with leverage safely if you'd like a, a, me to just send you a copy of this talk then you could decide whether this is for you or not okay so if you're not investing this is what I always say if, if you don't have faith that the markets will rebound you're betting against science politics and history you're betting against the chance that we won't find a cure to COVID-19 you're betting against the chance that the government won't step in to help out big businesses to help to recover the market and you're betting against history you're saying that in our history markets have never uh, we've had markets that went down and never came back up but of course we have had that in World War II we had that with Spanish flu we had that with the 2008 crisis so the one thing you should understand is you should have a long-term expectation this isn't for people who want to make a quick buck next month uh, it really is a long-term strategy if you're going to do this in a safe way you're going to be you, you, you got to expect additional volatility and you got to have stable enough income to make sure that you're able to serve the commitments that you're making, whether they be uh, a dollar cost averaging strategy or a loan investment or something of that sort. So, so some quick advice on the investment side. What are some mistakes to avoid if you are going to invest in this crashed market? Number one, investing without understanding what you're investing in. Coming in too heavy too early. Short selling or day trading, we highly recommend that clients do not do that. Trying to time the bottom, which absolutely nobody can, and it's dangerous to try to do that. And essentially not getting help. Okay. So if you are using any form of a loan over here, like I said, I would I would request the three ways to invest with 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 lines of credit uh, recording, which I've recorded. You could just email me directly and I'll just send you the recording. So if you are going to do this on your own, do it in a safe way. Listen to my recording and then I'll show you some strategies on how you could do that. CDY at latitude west.ca. So uh, tomorrow we're giving a webinar um, on uh, uh, COVID stocks that uh, uh, we feel that are going to survive uh, the crisis, if not thrive. If you wanted to register, you could do this at latitude-west.ca uh, under workshops. So that's tomorrow, and, and, and we're actually doing this every week. It's just the next one is coming up tomorrow if you'd like to join. If you did register, you can uh, get the recording as well if you can't show up to the live webinar. So the first thing we, we, we say is consider investments. The next thing that we say is you should always do an insurance review. Uh, and the reason why we say to do an insurance review, this crisis has shown us the importance of having backstops, the, insurance, the importance of covering ourselves. For those of you who might be self-employed out there, uh, uh, even more reason to do an insurance review. So a, a quick little actuarial table here. I'm going to take a female age 25. And I'm taking a look at uh, the, the probability from an actuarial standpoint of being disabled, critically ill, or passing away. So as you could tell, the chance of this person passing away is very, very small. 5% chance that they would pass away before the age of 65. But the chance of being injured by a disability, 43%. Ch chance of them claiming on a critical illness, cancer, heart attack, heart disease, stroke is 20%. Cumulatively, you have a 52% chance that one of these policies would be triggered before the age of 65. Now, a critical illness, a disability, and a life policy, 
actually own on a personal level is very, very inexpensive. So depending on as long as you are healthy. So I always say to do an insurance review, to take a look at what your current benefits or your association covers you for, and then say, do I need to implement more in order to ensure that I'm covered correctly? So then I talk about the high price of waiting. There are three things constantly moving against you from an insurance perspective. The rates, because they go up every single year. Your age, that goes up, unfortunately, every single year. And your health, your health tends to also increase risk every single year because we're visiting the doctors more. There's more things that are happening to us. So why don't I just wait to get my insurance later? There's three things, again, we have to consider. One, rates may uh, go up exponentially, especially due to the COVID crisis. Let's see how many claims we start to get from the insurance companies. But when you apply early, your rates are locked in. The other one is the COVID crisis itself. Imagine if suddenly you got COVID-19, but then you uh, recovered from it. You might be uh, disqualified from any form of insurance for the rest of your life. The insurance companies are still trying to understand how this is going to affect it, uh, people long term because of the relapses. So especially if you're under, uh, uh, if you're a healthcare worker you're, and you have a little bit more exposure, you might not pass away from COVID-19, but you might now disqualify yourself from putting in place any future insurance and there are discounts for certain professions um, uh, with certain companies those things might go away as the years keep moving forward over here so I always say you know avoid the uh, avoid the um, Superman syndrome and think you know these things will never happen or it, or also saying you know I can't afford insurance right now it's it's shocking how inexpensive some of this stuff is. I always recommended people, especially people with families, should make sure that they're fully covered. If you did want just a quote on the phone to see what your situation would look like, uh, you could always contact uh, Joel on the call over here, j.robertson at latitude-west.ca. Okay. So here, uh, uh, our, our team here at Latitude West, we're here to serve you, we're here to help you. We wanna give you as much free advice as we possibly can. We invite you to give us a call if you want some planning. And of course, if you wanna actually do some financial planning with us, uh, what we do is we always take a discovery meeting. Now this would be online. This does not cost anything to do a discovery meeting. It's just us fielding your questions and us getting to know you and you getting to know us. If we did end up working together, our process would start with a discovery meeting then we would do a planning strategy called a navigation plan. Whatever comes out of that planning, we would do an implementation, and then we would follow through periodically throughout the year to ensure that you didn't have any more questions or that the plan was being uh, uh, proceeded with. So we always start with cash flow. That's what's most important to us. We want to make sure you're in a good cash flow position or how to get you in a better cash flow position, and then we start moving up the pyramid. We want to make sure you're insured correctly to protect you, then that's the defense. Then we want to make sure you're invested correctly that's the offense and then we want to see if there's any tax efficiency as well so so right now uh, before we move into the uh, questions and answers period we just you know we're doing pretty good for time over here how can we all help you you know, well, uh, from the Latitude West perspective, we can listen to your financial issues. We could help to implement a strategy, help to review your insurance, or take a look at investment options in this down market. And at the very least, I could continue to help you at our workshops. So if you want to ever just see what workshops we're giving on our website, you could visit us at latitude-west.ca. Look at our calendar, look at the workshops that are coming up, and then you know, by all means, join the ones that, that of the open workshops that you're able to. So our main goal is to educate you, you know, and we want to help as many people in this crisis as possible, whether you're a client or whether you're not a client. And, and, and so, um, uh, uh, Eric, did you want to, I apologize, Eric, for not putting your website over here. Do you want to quickly just talk about uh, your group again and the, and the site? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so, uh, witchdoctor.com, and that's W H I C H, or wellnessassociation.org, will take you through to um, like a, an extensive community of healers uh, who are from the health, wellness, or alt health, or health services that are non pharmaceutical, whatever. Uh, basically, there's about 1,200 of these practitioners on our site. And uh, right now, the vast majority of them are offering online services only, of course, but typically you can either book uh, in clinic at home or online. Uh, basically, anybody can go to the site and they can use it just like they would, say, like an Airbnb-style site. 
Um, but people who become members of the association, they can save 20% um, off of all the services that are there. So people that are spending, you know, $3,000, $4,000 a year, um, as what we see is our average for, um, for people that are investing in these services, you're going to save a lot of money by by becoming a member of the group. Um, you know, basically, you'll find everything you can possibly imagine on there. For anyone who's interested in health and wellness or non-pharmaceutical uh, healing remedies, uh, this is definitely the place to go and, and, and check out and see what our practitioners have to offer. Uh, and then, once again, any member of the association qualifies for the cell phone plan. We also have some health insurance stuff, and uh, we're always looking to get other benefits together for people. People. If you kind of think of like a, a, a CAA kind of situation where, you know, yeah, the point <laughs> is to help people with, with towing their car, or, you know, roadside assistance or whatever, but it also has all these other benefits. We've kind of structured it like that where, yeah, the point, of course, is health and wellness, but hey, if we can help people save money, then, then of course we do. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, Eric, uh, g give, us the, uh, give us the email to connect with you or your team directly if they had questions. Yeah, so uh, easiest one is uh, Eric with a C, and it's at witchdoctor.com. And the toll-free number is 1-855-263-7883, and I can be reached at extension 2. Sure. Can you spell the witch doctor part again? Yep, W-H-I-C-H-D-O-C-T-O-R. Perfect. Com. Yeah, perfect. And then if anyone basically emails us and wants to be redirected to you, we'll just forward you on. But um, yeah. Yeah, so, so we're going to stay on the call in order to field questions, but uh, uh, we are going to stop the recording right now. Uh, so um, I, I th uh, for those of you who, uh, who are listening uh, off of the recording, by all means, feel free to connect if, we, if you had any further questions or if there's any other way that we could help you. All right.